The coach can place these different rules depending on different situations, on different contexts, different time, different reasons for coaching. The coach as ally is the guy who's going, going to stand by his team in times of crisis. Right now, we're having this lockdown situation and uh, we're seeing many teachers who need to do online courses. But nobody asked them, Did you, do you have all the resources to do these online classes? The ministry just said, okay, now teachers are at home. Now you just go and do your online classes and send either through Zoom or Skype or any other platform, you just do that. Who's going to stand by the side of these teachers and really give them support? We've seen in the Mauritian context, we've seen some of the ex-teachers and some of the ex-ministers of education coming up and saying, this won't work because these poor guys, they've, one, never been trained in doing this. They've never been in these kind of situations. And maybe nobody asks, do they have the resources? What happens to those kids, to those teachers who are in private colleges? Where when you go and see these private colleges, it's just a house which be, has been turned into a college with the classroom really not in the really, not in a really conducive way to educate people. So nobody is going there to stand. If you've got somebody who can really understand the employees, the teachers in this case, who's really going to stand by them in times of crisis saying, no, we can go through this uh, direction that we've got from the Ministry of Education saying, just go on online courses and we cannot make this happen. The second type of role that the coach can play is the catalyst. The guy who's going to offer you a challenge, a really challenging task, who's going to provoke and speed up your process and your progress because he can see your hidden potential, whereas you can't see it yet. Third type of role that the coach can play is model out, somebody you want to imitate. We talked about uh, Steve Jobs. We talked about Richard Branson. These are the, or Ratan Tata. These are people who people want to be inspired by. They want to model on these inspirational roles. People whom you admire, who can be sources of inspiration. Fourth role that we can see there is the teacher. The coach, who's the wise guy who can help you to acquire new skills, new knowledge, who's going to encourage your professional development, who says, maybe you can go on this online course through Adventure right now. Or I've seen Harvard, the seven universities, Yale, Harvard, Stanford, who are putting their courses, free courses online during this lockdown period. So this is the kind of coach that you can have, who says, and Usually these uh, very nice coaches as teachers come up with nice quotes sometimes. I remember my coach when I was at this leadership uh, center, Brian, a South African guy, who used to have every day, he used to have these nice quotes for us. And one which still I'm very fond of says, writing crystallizes thought. Very often we've got all these ideas. We want to do this, we want to do that, but we never end up doing anything. But when once we start writing, what is it that we want to do? We've got just this idea. If we can start writing and start developing, why do we want to do that? What is it exactly that we want to do? How do we want to do that? Who's going to help us? Then maybe we can start crystallizing the whole idea. Next, next type of role that the coach can do, please, is the networker. He's the guy who's got a whole network and he can exchange information with you. He can make introduction for you. He can say, maybe you can go to this company. You know, we met the other day at Hennessy for this uh, happy hour. 
And I was talking to this guy. Hennessy is a hotel where very often you will see all the young people going for happy hours, Friday nights, Saturday nights. And I made this contact there. Maybe you can go take his card. He's going to coach you in this way. He could be an advisor. He could be the guy with expertise. He could be this consultant who can give you recommendations and ha help you to grow in your career. He can also be this advocate, someone who can speak in your favor. Let's say there's a promotion coming up next year, and he's been seeing your performance over these past two or three years. He can go to the CEO and say, I think this guy, this girl, would be the best match for this type of job. He can put in a word for you. The coach is a listener. He's the person who can act like a sounding board. He's somebody who you can trust. You can go there and meet him maybe over this cup of coffee or in the lift when you go back home and you can discuss your own challenges at work, maybe your challenges at home or relationship challenges or even talk about your career development or this course that you want to go on. He's the guy who's going to be there, non-judgmental, who's going to help you for questions, find the right solution for yourself. The coach is also a supporter. He offers good encouragement. He will say, Tasmin, I'm just taking a name. Did you see Tasmin today? She's wearing this beautiful dress. You know, I heard about Tasmin going for these online courses and I can see how she's changing overnight. He's the guy who's going to boost up your self-esteem. He's going to say, bravo. Do you know, you've, the child of uh, Sandeep won the dance competition last December. He's the going to talk about really the whole person. And he's always expressing his beliefs in your ability, in the whole team's ability. He can put in a lead for you at a customer's place, at a client's place, and really going to support you. The coach can also be this companion. He's the guy who's going to talk about his own experience, share his experiences, work experiences, life experiences, listen to your personal problem. Like I mentioned, my, my French consultant I was working working with in 1993, he's still my mentor and he's been accompanying me through my different career path, the job changes I did. He knew my, my husband, who's not my husband at that time, so he knew about him. I can talk about him, how we're growing as a couple after 24 years of marriage and he's still that type of companion, even if we're not seeing each other and we're living miles across. The last role that the coach plays is the challenger. He's got really high expectations from you. He's going to confront your negative behavior. Very often managers or leaders hide from this. They're going to brush under the carpet. They say, okay, this guy is performing well, but if this guy doesn't get along with everybody else, like the guy I had in my own team, they would, they would say, okay, let's brush it under the carpet. He's managing, he's performing, even if everybody else is not happy with him, but he's giving results. So we're not going to tackle his poor negative behavior. But the challenger is going to do that. He's going to put his finger where it really hurts. And he's going to encourage winning behaviors the people who are going to go out there. I remember at one time when we, I was with this leadership company, we had to go to different, we were doing a project for the five main hospitals in Mauritius, this leadership course for regional health directors up to doctors and nurses. And we had to go out in uh, Flak, in Mayburg, in Suliak, everywhere. 
in condos in Pamplemousse, and the young facilitators should join who didn't have a car. And this guy, who was the administrative guy, proposed to drive these people out there. He used his own car. And that's really one of the winning behaviors that you can encourage. Whenever you have to deal with this challenger coach, he's going to deal with conflict situations, with poor behavior, negative behaviors. He's going to do it without blame because he's going to optimize on all the right behaviors that's there and still address the negative behavior without blaming anybody. You cannot just coach for once and say it's done. It's a constant ongoing process. If you want to lose five kgs, you're not going to go to the gym once and say, okay, it's done. You need to go for one month, maybe more than one month, and constantly exercise and train till you reach there. Coaching is, in, is the same way. It's constant and it's ongoing. And throughout the career, people can have different coaches. Your colleague next to you could be your coach. People who could be from a different organization, different industry could be your coach. One point in time, we used to think it's just the person to whom you report who could coach you, but it's not necess necessarily the, fa the right thing. You could have coaches through different uh, organizations in different situations, even if we're talking about performance coaching. Mentoring, like we said, is broader. And there's no specific schedule for mentoring. It's a lifetime activity. I can talk to my mentor now and maybe in two years or three years time, I can, I am going to talk to him. You can have multiple objectives. It's not one defined goal. Whereas coaching is a particular goal. It's a defined goal. <laughs> 